very sad thing happened. Oh, I got neat. The one that I've spent hours standing on this drive, faffing around with, doing lots of uh, lovely work to, and um, they just took it. So, from what I can gather, um, the way it works is something like this. Some young lads, usually young lads, um, just uh, pick up the bike and get it into a van, hide it somewhere um, for a couple of days in case it's got a tracker, so which I didn't have, dull. Um, and then if nobody picks it up, they assume there's no tracker and take it to somebody a little bit more organised. They get around 500 quid for a bike, probably less for a Himalayan to be honest. Um, and um, the organised people, um, who knows what they do with it, either break it down for parts, um, leave it a year or two before selling it so that the owner's not still scouring eBay and Gumtree and everything for, for it, or ship it abroad, whatever they do, but it gets into a more organised level at that point. Here's the little video that I made for the insurance company. This is where my bike was parked. You see it outside the church, Ramor Church. And as you can see, it's a pretty busy road. And that's the pub I was in, just at that left window there. Um, for 25 minutes approximately. Anyway, insurance eventually paid out and um, so I bought another bike. And the one I bought, if you've been following my channel for a while, you might recognize. And it's um, Chris's, uh, an idiot on board. And here it is. Firstly, it's pretty beat up. I mean, I kind of went with that because uh, it made it cheaper, but also um, I'm going to end up damaging it and bumping it and whatever anyway. So here are some of the uh, jobs that I think I'm going to do to it. Firstly, number one, <laughs> Chris doesn't like the fact oh, that my first job is to do this, I don't think, but is to take that off. So I've got two boxes of bits, um, which he's given me. Some are off this bike, some are off another bike that he managed to get hold of stuff for. for. Front racks going to go back on. I've got a plan for that which I'll explain at some point. It's got the heavyweight bash guard on it so I'm going to keep that on there. This bracket on the back needs somehow turning around. I quite like what he's done to the to the number plate there so I might leave that rather than, uh, I, I haven't got the bracket anyway so I'm going to leave that for a bit. I'm assuming it's fully legal. I mean they're full size numbers. Quite a lot of things to do to, to return it to normal but, or standard, sorry not normal. It's never going to be normal, it's a Himalayan. Um, what am I going to call it? Well, Chris called it Wibble. I think he'd quite like to keep that name. So I'm going to expand that name, I think, and it's going to be called Wibble. But because the number plate's got FE in it, which is iron on the periodic table, so I'm going to call it Wibble the Iron Donkey or Iron Mule. Now, the tool tubes that I did before might not happen. They were great, but they had the disadvantage that all the weight was on the back. And as you saw from my uh, Derbyshire disaster video, um, and I'll show you a little clip here. The front was too unloaded and it caused this problem. Oh. Keep it. I'm down. So, lots to do. I mean, it is in good nick internally. It's in shocking nick externally. Oh yeah, it's one of the ones that um, was from the Batchel or several batches from Himalayan that, that, are, that are prone to peeling. So there's that to deal with. Whether I'll deal with it or not, I don't know. I might I might just um, might, might rub it down and spray it or I might just leave it. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna probably leave it there. It's a bit of a rainy day. I'll, I'll talk you through various bits as I do them. The rain's kind of stopped, which is good. Um, so I've got a couple more hours and I'm off for a haircut, as you see. Uh, crazy hair. One of the things I didn't mention before was um, the, the higher suspension. So he's, he's put the suspension lift kit on. Um, I've stripped off, stripped off the beak, stripped off all the stuff he'd done around the clocks. Um, cleaned, cleaned up a few things, cleaned up the tank a bit because that's always obviously the most noticeable part of a bite and I'll just clean stuff up as I go. So, what's the progress? Many, many things have happened. Um, where to start? Right, as you can see, the most obvious thing here is probably this. So cylinder heads off and you can see here where it's been leaking so um, this was uh, evident by just when it was starting and it was cold you'd hear a as the air was escaping um, so that's um, that's in the process of being sorted you see again same here um, so I'm going to clean all that up and put a new one in um, I'm a little bit concerned about the fact that it's um, leaking from the bottom here 
from the barrel gasket, I think it's called. Um, I've had to replace that before, and I'm wondering, well, I've got this far, if I should just go ahead and replace it, or just risk it and leave it. I'm going to have a look on the internet and see what, what the best deal is, and I'll get back to you on that, what I do for that. So that's, um, that's the main thing that I'm doing, is replacing the, um, the, the head gasket, and while I'm doing it, I'm putting a TEC cam in. Managed to set up a nice little um, dashboard setup with a phone mount and the GoPro mount. Um, putting the uh, tanks on the <laughs> the petrol and um, petrol and water ones. I've taken the water one back off over there just to uh, just while I'm doing it. Oh, here's all my um, these are all the bolts from the from the top end um, from the from the rocker cover. Is it a rocker? No, there's no rocker from the cam cam cover. Here's the bolts from the um, from the head gasket, the old camshaft. I've got, um, I've got an alarm here. So since it's been nicked, I've been a bit worried about it. I've got a tracker hidden on here somewhere. The, we've put the headlight, the front end back to normal. We've got the, uh, the LED headlight. The, um, I've kept Chris's screen because I quite liked it. I've also kept his back end here because I quite like that. So lots of things going on. Oh, um, I, OBD uh, thing of me. Um, a few other electrical bits, I can't even remember what. Um, uh, folding folding, uh, folding gear changer, I've adjusted the brake and gear levers to my preferred position. Time to clean this lot up and that lot up and put the new gasket in and start getting it all back together. I'll show you the new gasket, I wasn't very happy about this. But this is how it was delivered. <laughs> Just not attached to anything, nothing hard. So that could have got bent or folded, I think it looks alright. but. Um, but we'll see, we'll be putting that on shortly. I had to take the whole barrel off again because uh, <laughs> when, I, when I lifted the cylinder head off, um, even though I left these two bolts on, there are none on that side, so that side, when I lifted the head off, it pulled the barrel up a little bit and it started leaking around that side. So the barrel's come off, new gasket on its way from Hitchcock's should arrive um, hopefully tomorrow. If it doesn't, I don't know if I'm gonna make the deadline for going on this Wales trip in time. Um, if it arrives Saturday morning, I could probably just just about get it done but I'm gonna to have to start doing things not in the order that I'd planned um, so this was a nightmare getting all the gasket off scraping it off with the with the old trusty uh, blade um, but I've got it clean enough and I'm, for this gasket I'm gonna put a little bit of gasket sealant either side of the gasket as well just a, a smear um, I've done that before and it works really well the cylinder here is not an original and the bolt coming out the bottom was a little bit too long brake pedal ended up being far too high so I had to take that apart grind it well I couldn't take it well I could have yeah anyway I did it more or less in situ just leave it out here got the grinding wheel on it and um, ground it down a little bit just to just to uh, j just so I could lower this to a, to a reasonable level just about an inch or so 25 mil below the foot pedal which is about where I like it uh, more to come next thing that I'm going to do probably is start on the exhaust here just replace it start replacing that as you can see the front end's uh, fully removed but I'm keeping keeping the pipe it's just a can that I'm replacing going back to a stock all right um, so we're starting to reassemble it um, piston ring orientation first what we've got is we've got piston ring one is here piston ring two opposite here so one's here two's around the back three here four is it that's a, so that's all the piston rings lined up i'm going to pop the gasket on in a second but i'm just going to clean clean up any little bits of dust put on a bit of gasket sealant and then away you go i don't know if it's chris or if they've started doing this but i know that there's been an issue with leaks from around these bolts and the other two that go up here and so either the previous owner or maybe RE have started doing it themselves. They've put some gasket sealant around these two bolts and around the other two up there. So I'm gonna do the same when I reassemble it. I'm just trying to pick off the old the old gasket sealant from there so I can get the uh, get get it all tightened up.
as always, messed up. Bloody ADHD. Um, forgot to put the little seal in for the inlet manifold and forgot to put the valve, the um, chain guide in just here, which I've now put back in. Right, that's all talked down. I'm hoping it's not going to rain because I'm going to go and have some breakfast now. <laughs> TEC performance cam, cam fitted. Uh, I didn't get the, um, uh, whatever it is, the Loctite 5900, so I've just got some regular um, RTV stuff which should be fine for doing the, uh, doing the gasket on the top. If it's not, I'll have to just replace it at some point. It'll just be a bit of a loop, will not it? A bit messy. As per usual, no, uh, no prior testing, so this is the first try. Let's see what happens. Are you alright, Sean? Not the tone that I was thinking. Ah. <laughs> You're a day early. Am I? Yeah. Am I really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't think it matters. I thought it was 14th to the 18th. It's been raining all the bloody way here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get a day uh, in the rain. Day in the rain, yeah. So, spectacularly, I'm here a day early. What a muppet. I don't know how I did that. I just. I'm sure it was 14th to the 18th, but at some point the date must have changed and I didn't read it. So, dull! Oh! Anyway, it's not raining right now immediately, so I'm going to try and get my tent set up and maybe try and get some things dried off. <laughs> One idiot, but here's, uh, here's Motor Cam Wales. It's like a bloody comedy of errors. So, first thing I did, I arrived, went to put it on its centre stand, it sunk into the ground on one side and fell over, and now it's punctured. Right, so it's an old repair here, which um, glue's come off now, um, and uh, so I'm just I'm leaking my water. <laughs> here a day early. <laughs> What's wrong? Oh look, nice. Well, I've arrived a day early. <laughs> A knob. So this is Motor Camp Wales. We've got Moto Camp, home of Moto Junkies. Lovely campsite actually. Some nice spots. I mean it's a bit deserted. Anyone would think the rain's putting people off. Who knows? Maybe when the rain the sun comes out in the next couple of days, things will start to improve. But cloud tent, bike, clothes drying because it's a mess. Um well it's wet. Because I got wet. <laughs> uh, neighbours. It's just beautiful and um, sometimes I forget how awesome Wales is and how near it is really. It's only just down this I think it took me a well an hour and a half before I was in Wales and then another hour and a half to get to this beautiful spot here. Central Wales come down. <laughs> 